In 2017, Hurricane Irma devastated the Caribbean nation of Antigua and Barbuda. During the storm, the most vulnerable communities lacked safe, accessible community shelters. Afterwards, they lacked access to loans to repair and improve their flooded homes. Hurricanes in the region are now more powerful and happen more often. Irma underscored the importance of an integrated approach to climate resilience in coastal communities. A project funded by the Adaptation Fund is doing just that, restoring drainage canals, climate-proofing vulnerable residents' homes, and creating community storm shelters. Well, we all know that superstorms are coming. Irma was the strongest storm ever to hit countries in the Atlantic. Every island was affected. This particular project has three components to address a waterway, a revolving loan fund for the private sector to make their buildings more resilient, and a granting portion for community buildings. Every time that the place flood, right, the rainfall, it flood up all over, all over flood. It's uncomfortable when the water is not moving properly, bring up, come up under the house and so on, you know, and bleed mosquito and so on. Yeah, every year we get more hurricane. So you need, we need something proper, proper for the for, um, get rid of the water. The Adaptation Fund project seeks to build resilience to our infrastructure and to the communities. This particular project focuses on the McKinnon's sub-watershed, northwest McKinnon's coast, and we are looking at building the resilience of the natural drainage system, which is three kilometers of drainage system that traverses a number of communities to the impact of hydrometeorological events such as rainfall. The second component of that, as we are looking at an integrated approach to the community resilience, we have an adaptation window for revolving loan at 2%. The average person don't have access to finance, to mm -hmm. finance climate resilience. You know, interest rates are uh, 5 to 7%. Mm -hmm. So the um, adaptation fund, sub fund, would set up low financing mechanism, mm -hmm. like one to two percent. So the average person could be resilient in their home. I'm glad I was telling my wife just now, and she was very excited about that. The loan is going to help me a lot because let me tell you, when the water comes down, I get sometimes twelve, sometimes nine inches of water in the house. When the the drain is overflowed, it comes right into the house. And some of the appliances just go bad. And that's what I apply for, just to get the house raised. Otherwise, I think the, the majority of the house is still in good condition. Component 3 is really looking at fit-for-purpose community shelters. So we would look at strong bunker-type shelters. We'd write shutters. We'd have facilities like bathroom and kitchen. And we'd also have renewable energy. So, you know, as soon as a storm passed, the system could be put up. You could have electricity. Through this project, we hope that in two or three days, people would be back up and running. We are just a stone throw away from one of the most depressed communities in Antigua. And therefore, you know, having something that they are shelter that they know that is available to them is a very comforting thing to the mind. This is St. Francis de Assist and the Good Shepherd's Home for Girls. The church has also submitted an application to um, open up their facility for persons in the community. The big storm come, we have to go in and there to take the shelter until when, you know, till better can be come, till better can be done. It will do a great help to us. The church has received a grant to establish a hurricane-proof shelter for the girls' home and other vulnerable communities, such as the disabled and the elderly who live nearby. People generally gravitate towards the church when there is any natural disaster. And so this facility lends itself very much to the needs of the most vulnerable within the community. So we're very thankful for the opportunity and we want to thank the donors, the Adaptation Fund and the members of the Department of Environment for providing us with this grant funding so we could now have a well, fully functional shelter within the space. In addition to financing concrete climate adaptation measures like community shelters and water management programs, Adaptation Fund support also works in concert with other funding resources, such as the Global Environment Facility Special Climate Change Fund or SCCF. The SCCF fund funds the studies, but the adaptation fund will then finance the implementation of the output of those studies, which is the waterway upgrade and the woods fund upgrade. The adaptation fund product upscales up the SCCF fund, but they're mutually beneficial to each other. 
The Adaptation Fund's pioneering direct access model, where local implementing entities are accredited to receive funds directly and quickly, is especially helpful in the Eastern Caribbean. My mom would have experienced less hurricanes than I have. I'm experiencing many more than she has, and my children will be experiencing much more than I will be. In three short generations, we would see 400% increase in frequency of drought, intensity of drought, frequency of hurricane, and intensity of hurricanes. The traditional financial sector is stepping back and rethinking whether or not they can operate in this space. Now all of a sudden, direct access sector has now become the darlings and the, of the region, so we're expecting to see more direct access entities coming up soon. Like this project in Antigua and Barbuda, many of the Adaptation Fund projects are some of the very first adaptation projects in developing countries, in those communities where they take place. And uh, if successful, these uh, models can be replicated and scale up in other parts of the world. And that is really the role of the Adaptation Fund, to try and test these new uh, activities that can be then implemented at a larger scale, uh, also by other sources of funding.